Hi guys. Well, for the second time today, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, where we have made it to Labor Day 2021, Labor Day 2021, the, uh, not officially the last day of summer of 2021, but kind of the last hurrah of summer of 2021. So since it is Labor Day, I was going to try to bring some chronicle of the collapse to do with working for a living. But as far as I can tell, nobody wants to work for a living any, anymore. I was thinking of, you know, maybe some talk on the mainstream media about what it's going to mean when how many millions of people lose their, uh, those corona panic unemployment benefits to try to nudge people back to work. No mention of the fact anywhere on the mainstream media this morning, no mention of all of these unemployment benefits uh, ending. So instead, I kind of scrapped that idea for my Labor Day uh, working for a living roundup, and I just decided to, let's just do an end of summer 2021. Uh, we'll have the official end of summer roundup coming up in a couple of weeks, but for the all intents and purposes, this is what the planet, or at least the mainstream media version of the planet, looking like on the quote, last day of summer. So I think, uh, let's see, I'm going to start. I think this is an appropriate place to kick off the end of summer 2021. <clears throat> um, after a summer of disasters, some lawmakers see a chance for climate action. Uh, well... And no, uh, actually, guys, the more I look at this, uh, we're going to save this for Saturday for the Hopium Roundup. Some lawmakers see a chance for climate action after a summer of disasters. Okay. Now, let's, let's get back on track. We're going to start here. Save that one until Saturday. This one from Business Insider. If you feel that the world's environment is doomed after this raging summer of hurricanes, floods, and wildfires, you could be suffering from eco-anxiety. Uh, we've heard this before. This is the latest talking about how eco-anxiety has been ramping up. Can't imagine why. Eco-anxiety is on the rise as more people hmm, become aware of how climate change will impact them. Younger people, I cannot imagine why this either, younger people are feeling particularly anxious about the world they are inheriting. Yeah, so I've had this rant before, but one more time. So what is the definition of eco-anxiety? <clears throat> uh, eco-anxiety is a term that has now officially been defined by the American Psychiatric so Association as, quote, the chronic fear of environmental doom. I'm glad to see the word doom finally showing up in the American Psychiatric Association. Yes, uh, you know, this whole notion, you know, people always talking about doomers being fearful, that uh, we are fear mongers and uh, suffering from fear and, you know, th th this whole notion of fear. Uh, it, it implies, fear to me, implies some form of doubt. You know, how you don't know how a situation is going to turn out. Uh, you don't know 
which one of those uh, wolves outside the cave door are going to get you. And, uh, but once you erase all doubt that we're doomed, once you fully accept, uh, you work yourself through all the stages and you come to full acceptance that we are doomed uh, and the planet is doomed, it's, it actually makes it easier to deal w with all of this crap. Uh, so anyway, are doomers fear mongers? Uh, anyway, from eco-anxiety to uh, what was a, another uh, to ecocide, eco-anxiety to ecocide, we have two terms uh, to add to the glossary of the collapse uh, <clears throat> here at the end of the summer of 2020, uh, 2021, the uh, growing recognition of eco-anxiety and ecocide. Again, I have already had the eco-anxiety rant several times and I've had this one a couple of times so we're just going we're just gonna go kind of grazing through uh, the mainstream media today alright from some outfit called the Daily Camera in Boulder Colorado we have a guest opinion uh, from Anthony Burke and Danielle Kellamajor, whoever they are. Human progress is no excuse to destroy nature. A push to make ecocide a global crime must recognize this fundamental truth. Yep. Uh, so they start out... Uh, with uh, looking at the Amazon rainforest, you know, I, I already this was the the leadoff story I had in my Manga Bay rant, which I see about ten people on the planet tuned into. Scientists recently confirmed that the Amazon rainforest is now emitting more carbon dioxide than it absorbs due to uncontrolled burning and deforestation. It brings this crucial ecosystem closer to a tipping point. Yes, that will see it replaced by savanna and trigger accelerated global heating. This is not an isolated example of nature being damaged at a mass scale. Yes. Um, Okay, so then, you know, you can go through the usual litany of the summer of 2021. In the face of such horrors, a new international campaign is calling for ecocide, the killing of ecology to be deemed an international supercrime on the order of genocide making ecocide is an internet making ecocide an international crime is an appropriate response to the gravity of this harm uh, okay so what is the definition of ecocide uh, let's see the global campaign is being led by the Stop Ecocide Foundation working to the... Right, this is the working definition of ecocide. Quote, an unlawful or wanton, unlawful or wanton acts committed with knowledge that there is a substantial likelihood of severe and either widespread or long-term damage to the environment being caused by those acts. Uh, 
well, there's a problem with this is, is every time you go to the gas station and fill up your gas sucking car, you're committing ecocide. I am, I am committing ecocide in my backyard. I'm probably going to use two tons of concrete building a stairway up the side of a hill to nowhere. I, I, I fully understand I am guilty of the crime of ecocide. All right, I'm, I'm going to have a BLT uh, here for lunch every time uh, I put a piece of bacon in my mouth. I am committing ecocide. Uh, so anyway, we do have a problem is that we have to throw 8 billion people in jail for but the but of course the the big problem with this definition uh, according to these uh, these folks writing this, a key concern is that this proposed definition <clears throat> considers only unlawful or wanton acts to be ecocide. Most environmental destruction is not illegal. Yes. Uh, so what is the definition of wanton? Wanton is defined as, quote, reckless disregard for damage, which would be clearly excessive in relation to the social and economic benefits anticipated. So every time you uh, fill up your gas sucking car. Okay. Are the social and economic benefits of you being able to drive around in your gas sucking car, where I'm usually driving around to is Home Depot and Lowe's. All right, so when I fill up my gas sucking truck, is the social and the economic benefits of me playing my part in the global industrial economy by going to buy another ton of concrete at Home Depot, is that wanton? Is that wanton? Is it a reckless disregard for the planet? Uh, you can figure that out for yourself. Yes. Yes, most environmental destruction is not illegal. And, you know, not only is environmental destruction uh, not illegal, but environmental destruction is the number one foundation of global industrial civilization. This entire civilization is built on environmental destruction. I am going to commit more environmental destruction before dark tonight than half the species on planet Earth combined are going to commit in their lifetime. Okay, now we're going to end up with some, uh, we're going to end up with this story from Russia because I want to end up on some good news on their last, <clears throat> on this last summer holiday. So, uh, okay, several versions of this one, this story in today's mainstream media. This is from Axios. Over 200 medical journals warn the climate crisis is, quote, the greatest threat to public health. Global warming is affecting people's health, and world leaders need to address the climate crisis now, as it cannot wait until the corona panic is over. Editors of over 230 medical journals warned Sunday evening. This is the first time so many publications have come together to issue such a joint statement to world leaders underscoring 
the severity of the situation with the Journal of the American Medical Association, the Lancet, and the British Medical Journal among those issuing the warning. Uh, <clears throat> okay. The head of, you know, COP26, the journals warned, quote, the greatest threat to global public health is the continued failure of world leaders to keep the global temperature rise below one and a half C and to restore nature. Yes, and I love how they, uh, they uh, bring in the corona panic being a bad hair day compared to. Okay, this is over 200 medical journals weighing in on the fact that the corona panic is a bad hair day compared to the shit storm brewing out there. So let's listen to this warning to UN leaders. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Quote, <clears throat> health is already being harmed by global temperature increases and the destruction of the natural world. Despite the world's necessary preoccupation with the corona panic, we cannot wait for the pandemic to pass to rapidly reduce emissions. Yes, uh, World Health Organization chief, whose name I cannot, cannot pronounce, said in a statement ahead of the publication that, quote, the risks posed by climate change could, could dwarf those of any single disease. The risks posed by climate change could dwarf those of any single disease. We will end the corona panic, but there is no vaccine for the climate crisis. Yes, there is no vaccine for the climate crisis. So what is the bottom line? Okay, the bottom line of over 200 medical journals, quote, the science is unequivocal. A global increase of 1.5 C above the pre-industrial average and the continued loss of biodiversity risk catastrophic harm to health that will be impossible to reverse. Okay, so I was really looking forward to some intelligent conversation in this long, involved story. Uh, from the conversation by a professor of economics with a name I cannot begin to pronounce, asking the question for today's conversation, if China's middle class continues to thrive and grow, what will that mean for the rest of the world? And I said, finally, we're going to get some uh, some honest reporting on uh, what it will mean for the rest of this planet as uh, the population of China gets more and more money. There's, there's only one problem. Nowhere in the article is an answer to the question. What would high income China mean for the rest of the world? This is the one time this dude begins to answer it and take a wild guess what it is. 
the noted China scholar and Stanford University professor Scott Rosell has said that, quote, the entire world will be much better off with a thriving China, close quote. Yes, he reasons that the world would benefit thanks to continued access to many low-priced goods, while China itself would benefit because increasing personal prosperity would dampen civil political unrest. <coughs> so we have a Stanford University professor stating the entire world will be much better off with a thriving China, close quote, because the world would benefit thanks to continued access to many low-priced goods, you know, such as this 99-cent pair of glasses uh, on my face. Uh, and so I was waiting to find the words Belt and Road Initiative, and it, and it actually showed up in the second to the last paragraph. This is the total discussion of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Meanwhile, China is already expanding its international clout through its Belt and Road Initiative, which involves investing billions, billions in development projects. They should have said billions of Chinese dollars in thousands of development projects across Europe, Asia, East Africa and the Western Pacific. Uh, in the process, China is credibly demanding and beginning to receive a dominant political role on the world stage. Uh, that is the, the total discussion of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative and uh, I am, uh, every time I mention this, I, I have a senior moment where I cannot remember who that ecologist was. Who was it that I interviewed? Uh, calling correctly the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative the single biggest threat against life on planet Earth today the number one biggest threat to the rest of this world is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. It is not climate change and it certainly isn't the it is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative with no help from any other country on this planet once again China will destroy this planet and all higher life on it. What will this mean for the rest of the world? It means the planet is doomed. I don't give a damn what your feelings about China are or whatever. Uh, you know, they're people like anybody else. All right, but we're going to wind up in uh, anybody who acts like there's never any good news on Collapse Chronicles. Hallelujah, we do have some good news to wrap up the Labor Day 2021 Collapse Chronicle from the Daily Beast. Why Putin's desperate push for more Russian babies will fail Russia is facing a dire demographic crisis and it does not seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. The country's dramatic natural population decline in the past six months, more than double the rate from the same time period last year, is so severe that it prompted President Vladimir Putin to come out with a rallying cry in support of larger families last week. 
quoting Vladimir Putin, quote, a strong family bringing up two, three, or four children should be the image of a future Russia. Yes. Uh, realizing this goal will be a Herculean task for many reasons. Uh, so they break it down, all of the reasons uh, why the baby bust in, uh, in Russia, why more and more and more Russian women are looking at the pros and cons of uh, bringing children uh, onto this planet. And the year 2021, while Vladimir Putin is begging people and just giving them cash payments, like, I think, what is it, something like, I guess, $400 a month uh, for every kid you have. Uh, while Vladimir Putin is asking four babies per family, nobody seems to be listening, and they're saying that <clears throat> at the present rate, that if, if it keeps going like it's going uh, over the past couple of years, by the end of this century, there will be 70 million Russians, which is less than one half of the population of Russia today. We will see how many people are on in Russia or anywhere else on this planet in the year 2100. But anyway... I did think you would enjoy a little bit of good news to put a smile on your doomer anti-natalist face <clears throat> as we wind up the summer of 2021. And I'm going to get out there and uh, celebrate Labor Day by one more time heading out to the remnants of my garden and laboring out in that garden one more day, pretty much ripping it out of the ground. I'm going to go harvest the potatoes and the onions. I'm going to bring them in for the fall. And uh, I guess I'll leave the beans and tomatoes for a couple of more weeks and everything else coming out. Time to plant the green manure before winter arrives here shortly. So get out there and labor in your garden in the summer of 2021 while well, you still can. Happy Labor Day. Bye, guys. You don't look like you're ready to go labor in the garden. You do not look like you're ready for a labor-intensive day to wrap up the summer of 2021. Bye, guys.